Socket. So. Good, yeah, just keep doing this, because we need that, we need that energy in the room. Yeah, hello, hello, can you So, on, this is on. I'd like to start out with a um, seven line prayer to Guru Mishe, and then we'll do the rest. <sighs> Can you hear me? No. It's on. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm talking, talking. Hello. Testing. Oh, hello. Hello. Okay. Teacher, bow destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world. Helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, Supreme One, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, O Destroyer, Glorious Victorious One, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, O Destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, Helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, Supreme One, Teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, Supreme Protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, build of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. 
Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field, endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind, this is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I take, take refuge, refuge in tell and enlightened in the Buddha, Buddha the Dharma, and the Sangha. And the Sangha. By, the by the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, Dharma may I attain, attain Buddhahood, Buddhahood in order, order to benefit, benefit all sentient beings. beings. May all sentient, sentient beings have happiness in the cause of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering in the cause of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some, some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, body speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time, time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, Buddha remain, remain as our guide, guide and turn the will of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created, created by, by myself, myself and others, and may the two bodhicittas ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering, offering I make as a precious, precious jewel mandala, mandala together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Yidam, Guru, Ratnam, and Dalakam, the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Bhagavan was dwelling on Master Vulture's mountain on Rajaguriya together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, Feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, 
not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shadiputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to, and including, no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to, and including, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Chariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas as well in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in the reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra to the unequals, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Hayata, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhisoha, in one time. Aita gate gate, paragate parasamgate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shadavari Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised as spoken by the Bhagavan. Thank you, Michelle. Very good. Are we live? working also okay i'm getting i'm getting yeses from uh uh georgia and um pennsylvania yes you can hear okay so <clears throat> the uh title for today is talking about families So uh, in our system, we talk about Buddha families. <laughs> so when we say families, um, of course, uh, we just saw a lot of families, right? <laughs> uh, that's called the uh, Nirmanakaya, or the, the manifest <clears throat> bodies. <clears throat> But uh, in Dharma, we also talk about the Sambhogakaya, uh, sometimes translated as the enjoyment body. Um, but for today, uh, I'm going to call it the relationship body. Because um, it's interesting, uh, when I do a couple counseling work, people can talk about him or her or her or her or they and they, but then they also talk about the relationship. Like somebody goes, I'd like to talk about re my relationship rather than talk about this person. That's the Mogakaya, that's talking about the relationship. 
you can't quite put it on the table, right? You can point to the manifest body, uh, <laughs> the person you're annoyed with or something, but uh, it's a little harder to point to the Sambhukhaya the um, relationship body, uh, the one we hopefully enjoy, right? Enjoyment and relationship and so on. But today I just thought uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, uh, a style of uh, practice um, and realization called uh, Jalu or rainbow body. Um, this is a style of uh, practice and manifestation that um, some of you may uh, have run into that have you know studied with um, uh, Zogchen teachers. <clears throat> <clears throat> on a uh, kind of outer level, like uh, there are various um, unique incidents where um, I'm, I'm going to leave scientific world a little bit. It's okay. Like, this is not this is not the humanistic Buddhist world of regular cause and effect where we're taking a leap into tantra. It's okay. Just, you're on that spaceship right now. <clears throat> So uh, there are instances where um, realized practitioners uh, are able to dissolve their uh, nirmanakaya body, their manifest body, into a light body and uh, disappear in that way. Then there are also instances of um, Jalu where um, you know, people have actually shrunk, shrunk down to, you know, proportionally down to the size of a small child. Um, there are instances where people have dissolved most of their body, but leaving some relics like pencil or they're leaving hair or nails or uh, a little um, kind of, uh, it's a little, uh, they look like um, pearls, right? Like that. Um, Sometimes those are um, recovered in, um, in after cremation, like we'll look through someone's um, remains and there might be these, these little um, uh, pencil. Uh, sometimes people's um, bones, uh, you know, then we'll have like uh, mantras on them like that. Um, when people are being uh, cremated, you know, just with a fire inside of a stupa, you're not you're not going to the regular kind of crematorium. <laughs> it doesn't get that hot, so people don't. Not not everybody is dissolved. So, <clears throat> um. Then there are also instances where um, people's, uh, you know, outer bodies, uh, you know, stay very, uh, you know, they don't go into rigor mortis, right? They just, or they might even stay like warm, the heart stays warm. Um, since not many uh, lamas have died in America, the West, yet, but many have, but not that many recorded instances, but um, one of the main teachers who I met several times, but didn't know personally, but 16th Karmapa, so his heart stayed warm for several days, you know, after, because he died in a Western hospital, and uh, this, this has been recorded. So, you know what, uh, these are fantastic, uh, in a way, right outside of normal kind of perception, right? But still, they're treated as uh, still like objective, we could say objective rainbow body in a sense, right? Like that. Um, there's also a very famous uh, photograph from the maybe 70s or 80s, like 
things to come up, but going into, you know, kind of blurry, parts are blurry, like his goes in, going in and out of rainbow body while he's teaching. Unbelievable, right? You know, what do you do with that, right? But <clears throat> still that is, um, uh, in a sense we call it like um, objective rainbow body, like that. <clears throat> checked in the sense that we can uh, see or not see um, the elements in uh, activity and action. When we're talking from kind of Mahayana, Hinayana Mahayana style, uh, in Tantra II, we're we're talking about uh, the five skandhas, right? I don't know if Elizabeth Zima is listening, maybe. Today she is, I'm not sure, but we'll be ta- I'll be talking with her about the skandhas and Dirk has given talk on the skandhas. However, when we're talking sometimes Zogchen style, we're just talking about the elements, uh, earth, you know, water, fire, wind, and space. So we're not seeing so much the person, um, as usually when we see a body, we just see a person. Um, when we're talking about the, the uh, Jalu and uh, talking about, in a way, objective Jalu, we're seeing the elements uh, in their raw state. We always talk about going out to nature and seeing, oh, like sunset or trees and water. You know, usually we enjoy being in nature, right? But, uh, we don't usually think of people as nature. <laughs> but uh, uh, when we're looking at through this lens, the uh, Sambhogakaya lens with the Tema, the Sambhogakaya with Jalu, as um, we're looking at the direct uh, manifestation of the elements. <clears throat> I don't know. Is this making sense? How am I doing, Dirk? How am I doing? Making sense? Yeah. Okay. So. So, uh, uh, it's a really, you know, a, a teaching <clears throat> in a way, um, although by that time, you know, it's not like conscious teaching, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay my jalu rainbow body on you. <laughs> but in Zotan we talk about uh, essence, nature, and manifestation, right, or expression. And nature is emptiness, you know, uh, and uh, complete openness, right? And uh, actually, the essence is uh, emptiness, complete openness. And the nature is like clarity, and and um, the uh, expression is the spontaneously appearances and activities like that. <clears throat> so when we look at the elements and human beings uh, from that point of view, let's say we, we, we see the expressive side of someone's Buddha nature, you know, through uh, Jalu like that. Because uh, uh, it's difficult, of course, to see, um, you know, you're not going to see emptiness as an object, don't you think? <clears throat> but from uh, the inner side, uh, we can talk about rainbow body, um, uh, that, you know, the, our inner experience, right? So, uh, there, it's interesting, can we experience ourselves as, as, uh, the elements that, um, are, you know, like, like a rainbow <laughs> when, when we move to the inner world. Of course, we can literally see some rainbows uh, when, uh, you know, great beings uh, are cremated sometimes like rainbow forms in a um, you know, completely uh, cloudless sky. Um, so that's, there's many documentations of that at this point, even in the West. 
but uh, what what is it like to experientially, uh, you know, be the elements and uh, be the rainbow body like that? <clears throat> if you try to be the outer rainbow body, um, then it becomes uh, like chasing your tail, right? So, uh, but if we cultivate the inner, um, then it's possible uh, as spontaneous expression or spontaneous teaching, then others uh, may see that. <clears throat> One indication is um, people, uh, they just want to be like around you, you know? <laughs> it's that simple, right? <laughs> you know, like how do, I, how do I know, like I'm connecting with the elements, connecting with this sense of um, rainbow bodies, they just want to be around you, right? For, uh, for you, you know, for, you know, training in this kind of Maha Yoga level, then um, I mentioned last time, two weeks ago, that, um, you know, you see people start looking more intelligent. <laughs> so I always know, I'm just, just telling you, when I meet, um, you know, with people in Darshan, of course, sometimes we have to talk about temple activities and things like that, but fundamentally, um, I always like to start out with training before we go to performance. And, uh, you know, in training, we're definitely training to see the whole environment as intelligent, right? A manifestation of uh, a Buddha mandala, don't you think? So, um, gradually that kind of seeps out, that gradually seeps out and um, <clears throat> uh, people start looking more intelligent. It might be annoying in their intelligence, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, then they're seeing, you know, a little bit of their elemental intelligence, right, just like that. It's important to do um, all the trainings um, uh, here at Lionsaur really from the standpoint of uh, being at the base of the mountain and also at the summit. And then um, kind of try to meet them in the middle. So or else when we're presenting the teaching, sometimes it's just right at the base, like there's suffering. <laughs> and then sometimes we just say it right from the view. Um, there's no need to fix anything. It's primordially or spontaneously pure and present right now. <clears throat> but generally on the path aspect, we're going to, you know, uh, work from both ends to the middle, some kind of balance. So for those people that are available, um, the way to, you know, classical ways have been devised to talk about how we um, do um, both ends at the same time. So um, we have a wonderful text uh, by uh, Patro Rinpoche, um, that I'd like to use that talks about the five, gives a very um, important, so 10 teachings on the five paths and the 10 bhumis, like that. So when you work from both sides, um, it's not the same structure as kind of climbing the path like Lamrim, or it's not the same structure, it seems like in uh, advanced mind teachings where just say, you know, just recognize nature mind. It has a structure that's very fluid and dance-like. So um, when we talk about the five paths and the 10 bhumis, 10 grounds, it, it's not like, um, uh, they're not stair steps and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe dance steps, something like that. 
know, maybe musical notation or something like that. You know, like, I don't know how many, how many notes in the scale? Are there 10 notes or 12? 12, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you don't necessarily say, you know, one note's better than the other, you know, you can say you go up and down the scale. Like that, so that's like uh, the buoys and the five pounds. <clears throat> There was a uh, really interesting teacher that I sponsored with Chad Gurumshe to come to Sacramento many years ago, uh, His Holiness Kusum Lingpa, um, who was said to have manifested and attained Rainbow Body. It really felt that way. There was something different in the room. Um, and people had similar experiences. Could say is that all just kind of wish fulfillment or you know some kind of you know psychic you know <laughs> uh fully ado or something <laughs> we could but um uh reputable people said you know there, there's something different going on here this doesn't feel like just your kind of normal kind of talk he was a very spontaneous teacher um which Maybe helped create an atmosphere of spontaneity and openness to the elements. But um, invite here is you know for the spring, um, and spring definitely uh, feels like a rainbow body feel. You know things are emerging kind of magically to um, notice in your practice um, these you know spontaneous moments of uh, the in between that are uh, rainbow-like. Because you can't put like a nice metaphor of rainbow, you, you can't put it on the table, right? <laughs> Maybe some of the kids here would want to go chase a rainbow. I used to have my mom want to do that. <laughs> this is in New York and they're frequently, there are frequently like thunderstorms and rainbows were kind of not so super much. So, We'd be driving back from like I mean, any New York was here, like from New York, like Playland or, or Coney Island. And there'd be some rainbow, and then Mom, go drive to the rainbow. And we wouldn't be satisfied until she at least made an effort. <laughs> <laughs> she would humor us to a certain degree, <laughs> like that, you know. Um, Go, where'd the rainbow go? Where'd the rainbow go? Like that, you know? <clears throat> so at the moment, causes and circumstances, we can actually see, um, you know, rainbow bodies objects. You know, it's reasonable to say, okay, I can see that person's kind of um, manifestation and I can have the inner um, uh, experience of that to see, um, you know, Tigle and different spheres and everything. But of course, when we look at the, um, you know, the essence, then if we go searching for it, like we want to capture it, then um, we won't find it, right? So that's why we say in Dzogchen, don't be a hunter. You, know, you cannot capture it, right? Don't be a hunter, don't hunt, you know? Um, but it can be recognized and um, it can be appreciated. And uh, we can take photographs of it, can't we? Yeah. So I'd like to um, stop here. You know, we have kind of, uh, I think we're going to end at noon because the, the, the kids, I don't know. You go tell one, they can have it. Uh, this kind of style of service also has some questions and discussions, um, you know, like that. So it's interesting. <clears throat> People want to, we need to hand out the microphones though, don't we? Yeah. And then how will we know if there's any comments from um, our, our viewers <laughs> out in video land? They'll, they'll unmute and just talk up. Is that okay? All right. 
everyone's super polite, you know? Like when we when Zoom started, you know, you had to like got to make sure people are muted in case they're doing something weird on the screen and we got to call on them or something, but or wait until they chat or something. But I think I think this is a mature audience, so we can just speak up. What do you think? <laughs> okay, fine, I'll say something. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was raised very much as a, a materialist, uh, and I have, like uh, most fairly well-educated people, I have a pretty deep foundation in that. Uh, you know, I was raised to be a physicist. Uh, and honestly, though, when it comes to Rainbow Body, I have no problem believing it. Just because just because it hasn't been investigated doesn't make it not true. Uh, there's a lot of evidence of these guys who have gone out and and mummified themselves. There's there's like a huge amount of evidence of that. So uh, if you can do that, if you can go sit in meditation until you become a mummy, <laughs> I think you can also dissolve your body. Uh, and Dujan Rinpoche too shrank. There are photographs of him. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, I appreciate I, I appreciate talking about it. It's hard to talk about because it sounds like you know uh, loony faith and something strange, but but I don't think it is. I, I I think that it's possible to do these things. So, not that that's the goal, really. I mean, it's not really the goal to become. To, to do something physical thing with the body i don't think that's the goal though is it i don't think it's the goal you know it's someone it could be someone's uh that's their spontaneous teaching style you know um definitely um mahasid is the part of the um understanding of you know the ability to be at one with and have mastery of the elements um, but uh, the elements can be totally on a on an inner level, right? We don't have to always, you know, um, dissolve our bodies. But um, for various reasons, different teachers like Dujan um, uh for them, it's it's a spontaneous manifestation of their compassion. You see. So when we talk about um, essence, nature, and manifestation, um, or appearance is, uh, at that point, it's always seen as compassionate activity that um, will benefit others, but, but not in a conscious, like, I've got to do this way. It's just, you know, that's how people, that's what happens. <clears throat> I'm pretty scientific too, but I've had extraordinary experiences and there's, um, uh, there's many things that uh, just because we don't explain now doesn't mean um, they're not happening. I'm having a hard time hooking up a new printer at home. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I, was repeating the mantra to Sabrina. If there's a technological problem, there's a technological solution. <laughs> but it's mysterious right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I have to, to believe that's true. <laughs> like that. I don't know how this shit works. I really don't. I I, I couldn't explain to anybody how even electricity works. So. I can't, um, this is Susan. I can't speak to rainbow body at all. I, but um, I was at um, Kopan Monastery the year that the, and Lama, you'll have to help me with his name because I don't recall it. Um, the abbot died. Um, uh -huh. 
and they had cremated him. I can't remember his name, but he, he had been Copan's abbot for many, many, many years, and he was highly, highly, highly regarded and revered. And they had cremated him, and we were able, um, some of the students were able to go see his relics. Mm. And those black pearls were there. Yeah. And about a month later, the relics were put on display again, and they had changed. The black pearls had grown nodules, and it was just like unexplainable and really kind of weird. <laughs> um, but they had changed. They were, they, were, they were living things, and it was just really um, a great mystery. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a great mystery. It's a great mystery, well, why um, any relationships work out. So to bring it back to interdependence and relationships, like um, it's actually really hard for um, there's something magical you know, like when people are in a relationship with another human being, maybe it's, you know, whatever it is, you know, how to explain how that relationship really works. There's magic there, right? There's also magic when it's not working. Because <laughs> we can't, we can't really explain it. See, we can talk about, you know, that person do, does this and they do this, you know, I like the person that they you know, do this, they're very loving doing this, and I don't like them when they're doing this. But, you know, when when you're talking about the relationship, then it takes on that Samogakaya rainbow body feel, right? Uh, because it's it has that kind of magic, and it does have concrete manifestation. You can see, okay, we, we're doing this together, we produce this house, we produce this children, we produce this business, we produce this bankruptcy, you know. So it's magical or divorce, isn't it? you know, things manifest out of that relationship that you actually, on a deep level, you can't see, but you can see its manifestation, right? So um, whether you're approaching Buddha Dharma from these really extraordinary uh, elemental expressions, or it's just, uh, you know, personal expressions of, you know, how you get along with your pet, and, there's, a, there's this Sambhogakaya rainbow quality to it that you can see it, but you can't grasp or own it. It's a big um, progress in a relationship when we realize we can't own or change somebody. <laughs> Usually to start off, there's this kind of like ownership thing, maybe the traditional patriarchal or matriarchal, I don't know. You know, let's face it, we like to own people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and control them, you know. But once, you know, the relationship has this quality of rainbow or jalu and we're, we've moved beyond like uh, owning or, or controlling things. So we know on the elemental level, whether we're, our body's able to spontaneously disappear or we can fly or manifest, you know, um, you know beautiful gems uh, that it has that, that kind of quality of being there, but not there in a concrete way. Because our practice is a practice of uh, non-duality, right? But not non-duality does, doesn't mean we don't see things, right? It's just we can't make them into solid self and other. You know, we can't own, can't own the rainbow, right? I don't remember that the abbot's name, but... Uh, uh, Kopan either, yeah. That was very special that Susan got to have that viewing. Because probably if you heard it from somebody else, you wouldn't really believe it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> we have a few more, a few more minutes. Lama. Hello. When, uh, you initially talked about the person as Nirmanakaya and their relationship as Sambhogakaya. Yeah. I was thinking that rainbow body would be Dharmakaya. 
that clearly from what you just said I'm mistaken I wonder if you could talk about that uh, Dharmakaya is just uh, completely uh, the no form aspect right you know so if we say two plus two is four you don't have to visualize two things right Just mind sees it. So when you say Dharmakaya, or, then it's uh, direct unmediated, you know. So Sambhogakaya has this sense of mediation, the in between world. That, of course, when we look uh, deeply into it, you can't find it as an object and you really can't find anything. But when you kind of step back, you can, you can see the rainbow from afar, right? The Dharmakai aspect kind of points to uh, direct unmediated awareness that has um, no fixed form at all. I think of Nirmanakai as some, something you could bump into. <laughs> but uh, actually, Nirmanakai, uh, uh, I was. Uh, you know, I like uh, some of the teachers um, and translators that have come from us teaching with Dr. Gunther. Herbert Gunther was an interesting, um, unique translator and practitioner. So the, this kind of <laughs> maybe just geeky information that, you know, Stephen Goodman and Kenard Lipman um, you know, try to talk and process language like Gunther did. So um, we think of bodies, we think of just kind of body, but, you know, we're, we're really talking about, um, uh, I like the way Ken and, uh, you know, translate in Gunther's processes, right? So the, the process of a certain kind of, a certain kind of manifestation process rather than like a thingy thing. I don't know, anybody here read any of uh, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Lemons? Uh, he studied with Namkai Norbo for a while. It's a very uh, wonderful book. I like the translation. I'm not sure whether it's literal or not. You are the eyes of the world. Anybody familiar with that? Beautiful book, you know, recommend it. I think um, both. Stephen passed away, Dr. Goodman passed away just a few years ago. I think Ken is still teaching at CIS in, in San Francisco with process like that. So, um, <clears throat> I also thought of, uh, I just watched a documentary a couple of months ago on uh, Chigam Trungpa Rinpoche. Yeah. And that's right before his passing. He, told his students that he would appear as a rainbow and that on the, the day of his uh, funeral, which was quite elaborate, there was a, a large rainbow yeah. across the sky. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was in, a, in amazement. And then the documentary cuts to like one of his primary students and like introduces him. And the, the student was like, I don't know. I still don't believe it. <laughs> I, I like those kind of stories. Yeah, they're, they're of course photographs. It, it's sometimes the best students that, you know, there was a wonderful student at Trump Room, she's, you guys don't know, <laughs> but who was on the board of directors. I wonder if my board of directors can uh, resonate. It goes, a lot of times we just wish Rinpoche would go away and let us run the place. <laughs> He just comes in and stirs things up. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's that's true. Okay, we have someone here, Morris. Hi. Hi. It's not on. Am I on? Yeah. My understanding is it's pretty primitive. So um, uh, people people like me tend to think of of. Um, 
uh, two truths, you know, the, the relative and the absolute. Uh -huh. And in my um, metaphorical way of thinking, that perhaps um, rather than seeing these as people like me tend to do as two poles, but there's a, actually a, um, there's no walls between them actually, and they're like a spectrum. And the spectrum, so to speak, is, is the rainbow, is the openness between the so-called absolute and the so-called relative. And that, that, that openness is the, um, um, the theater or the place or the arena where uh, rainbow phenomena can happen. It, it, it's the manifestation of those, it, it, that's openness that makes that possible. I mean, it, it, that, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, there's uh, so many different Dharma languages, right? Mm. So, yeah, I mean, you could say openness makes everything possible. You know, openness is another way of saying interdependent origination, you know? So, um, the, the fun thing about, um, I think, uh, studying you know, kind of classical dharma is that uh, if we're honest, there there are so many different languages and and ways to talk about it. You know, um, as a poet, I know you get that. You know, you move between literal and and fantastical language, and then you know, like we're constantly switching realities and playing with them, right? Like that. Um, and my hope is for people in Lions are to kind of have uh, some sophistication and, and understand like what what language are we speaking now? You know, what language system and paradigm are we in? It happens a lot with couples and families that, you know, people start switching language games and they don't tell, you know, they don't tell each other like, you know, like five minutes ago I was playing the, the loving language game and now I just want you to take out the garbage. You know, <laughs> and the other person goes, you know, if you don't tell people, they get upset generally, you know, it, but you can't always tell people, you can't always tell people I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm being all warm and cuddly language and, you know, you're gorgeous or you're wonderful, you're so kind and, and, you know, you generally don't say, I'm going to switch language systems now and talk about what you didn't do for me, you know? Um, but in, in Dharma settings, you know, we, we become sophisticated about language and manifestation. And, um, you know, the experience of rainbow body and the languaging around it is a very sophisticated system that comes about because we can talk openly, right? My foot in my mouth is twice today. Um, this is also about as it were, a complete freedom in object making? No. <laughs> yeah. Stick with the openness. So, um, I'm being a little pedagogical at the end here. So, um, uh, in my last visit to Powell's Books in Portland, anybody been to Powell's Books in Portland? Yay! So, uh, picked up a copy of The Girl Principle. Which camera? So, uh, uh, Lama Hukum's a, a, a woman in, um, in Britain, the UK, and uh, I like I like her book. It's called A Guide to the teacher student relationship in Buddhism and it's um, uh, very 
very practical and down to earth. So um, it's, um, uh, you know, another key relationship that um, is important, you know, particularly in our tradition. And uh, some people kind of can think Asian style and kind of get into that because when I started relating with my teachers, there was really practically nothing. But I want to save people time and stress. So, um, you know, she has a good overview and, and practical down to earth sense talking about relationships, right? Which is another kind of, which of course the uh, teacher student relationship is, has its own kind of weird thing, right? But um, it is possible between two people to actually, um, you know, experience like uh, uh, energy arc between two people, right? You, you can feel it, you know, it's, uh, so people go, ah, oh, it's another bullshitty thing, but uh, I like props in my office at Mentally Health and sometimes I have like magnets and they're too powerful. And when, when they're opposing, you can really feel the magnetic energy between them, right? That's a little bit like rainbow, but you know, you can't see it. You can't see the magnetic waves and you can't like say, I'm gonna take the magnet away and then leave that the energy between them on the table, right? It takes both, you know, the polarities. So um, it is possible to have that kind of energy arc between, of course, just uh, any people, but that's one of the things that how the rainbow body uh, manifests in a teacher-student relationship. So it isn't just like, the rainbow body's over there and it's not over there, you know? So when, when you experience that, it feels spherical and global, right? It doesn't feel like, well, I have it, but they don't, right? That wouldn't be, that wouldn't really be rainbow body. But that, that's an interesting thing that, uh, I don't, I don't uh, remember when I was looking, I don't, I don't know if, uh, um, Lama Hukum got into, um, that much detail herself in this book. She talks about pure lands and realms and visions, so I'll have to reread it again. But if you find that she's mentioned something about that, I'll be interested. So, Mama, are you recommending that book over Alexander Burson's book? Someone's talking. Oh, sorry. Lama, that's it's Susan. Are you recommending that in? Uh, over uh, Burson's book? Uh, well, I wouldn't say over. Uh, uh, or instead of? Not instead of, you know, like Burson's, Alex's book, Dr. Burson, you know, is, um, you know, very scholastic coming from like uh, a little bit, this is how it should be and, and um, kind of has, you know, objective parameters. Uh, Champion Hooken's book's more conversational and relational, I would say. Uh, might be a little bit more approachable like that. You know, his, uh, Alexander Burson's book's you know, revamped, but maybe 20 years old and coming from kind of a little bit doctrine place, I would say. Lama Hukum, she's coming from more uh, the working relationship kind of place. Yeah. yeah, I see. Thank you. Shall we? Shall we do closing prayers? You know, I I like to do like announcements after, so it, kind of sacred wrap and then. Due to the merit of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead every living being without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not yet risen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. 
All powerful Chen Rezig Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Drapa, I make request at your holy feet. Okay, announcement. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, do I have one? Oh, I have one. Yeah, thank you. So, um, I'm not sure, like, because uh, I haven't seen registration numbers on the 30th, but if, if people have taken refuge or entering the past ceremony, um, you're welcome. And you don't have to ask my permission, just but you do have to register. So, um, Ellen knows, you know, that you're coming to Lotus View. Mm. And, um, like I said, I'll, I'll um, go over, of course, uh, texts that we've gone over before. Um, you know, Garab Dorje and you know, Dorje Mirshes, but um, I want to concentrate on this path aspect of uh, the fourth path meditation and look at Pater Mirshes' text. Bypass and the boonies. Yeah. La la. Hello, um, this is Sue, library, and I just want to um, make the announcement that we're trying to start the library over again from after COVID. So we're clearing up all the records, cleaning up the records. And we need everybody who's ever made a deposit to um, contact us. If you've received a phone call or an email, please respond because we need to ask everyone to return any books that they do have. And if their deposit is here, if you would like to um, come and pick up the deposit in the next couple of weeks, or if you'd like to donate the deposit to Lion's Roar. So we're trying to um, get that all cleared up. We need to hear from every single person. So if you're here today, please see one of us. And if you're out there in, in faraway land, um, please respond either to the, to the phone call you may have received or to an email. Doug, you have anything else? So we're looking forward to getting this cleaned up and starting right from ground zero and uh, starting over again with a wonderful library that we have. Thank you. Yay. I guess we could have announcements. Yeah, can I do a couple? The world, right? Lama, can I do a couple? Hi, Lama. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, well, there's a change in medicine Buddha practice. And so we are not going to be having medicine Buddha online on Friday evenings, but we will have medicine Buddha practice in person in the temple on the first Monday of um, the month at 6.30. So um, that's a change in medicine at Buddha. And I'm not sure if it's on the calendar yet, but it will be on the first Monday, uh, sorry, the first Friday evening of the month at 6.30 in person in the temple. And um, the other thing is, is uh, the new sessions uh, study group uh, Steps on the Buddhist Path uh, begins next Saturday at 11 o'clock, and that will be both in person and online. And we're looking at a book called Wake Up to Your Life by Ken McLeod. So, so that's next Saturday at 11. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, everyone's looking beautiful and intelligent and 
maybe maybe a little hungry, you know. So I'm, I think we have some snacks, right? No, I don't know. We'll see. We'll we'll see what's we'll see what's out there. Thank you, everybody. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you, Nora. Yeah. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs>